This short film is about DFAT's review of its own red tape. Now, Nathan, ask me what we discovered. Louise, what did we discover? Well, it was extremely interesting. Anne and I went out to all posts and everybody in Canberra. And first of all, I should say we were encouraged by the enormous willingness of our colleagues to participate. We've come up with a whole range of practical suggestions, some of which are already underway, some of which will be implemented in the short and medium term. And that's a great thing. But at a deeper level, we discovered something else, and that that was the red tape it turns out to be quite emblematic, quite a powerful metaphor of how we feel about ourselves in the workplace and our colleagues and about our institution and how it feels about us. And my strong sense was that that was where our colleagues wanted the change to occur. And uh, this, this presented itself in three recurrent themes. They just came up all the time. And the first of them was this. Trust. Over and over. I think more interaction between the senior executive and working level staff can only give us positive cultural dividends in this department. But it also builds their trust in their staff. Well, I think a key issue is, is trust in the department. It's about um, the, the department being able to trust its staff to make judgments themselves on, on, on key issues. That there, are, there are so many small processes um, that require excessive approvals. If you trust most people, the majority of those people will go with that trust. The second great theme was... making room. Um, what that meant was people felt they'd been encumbered with these terrible troglodyte systems that were kind of discourteous towards them as people and their use of time. They were very unproductive, slow, requiring a lot of manual, you know, intense manual interaction. And we felt that if those could be changed, moved to electronic formats or shifting where delegations resided so that they were more closely aligned with the people who did the jobs, we would actually make room for the things that people are always urging us to do, which is, you know, think more strategically and be more productive. So, trust, making room. Now, on the subject of red tape, I'd like you both, very, very experienced DFAT professional officers, to tell me what has driven you most mad. Travel. 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 <laughs> Definitely travel. Definitely travel. Yes. Divisional coordinators are, in my view, pinnacle corporate enablers for divisions, and yet we're not enabled to enable the department. It's ridiculous. At the end of the day, we're responsible for running our business unit. So whether that's a geographic division, mm. a corporate division, a trade division in my case. So when senior officers are doing what they're doing best, we should be enabled to do what we need yeah. to do to keep things ticking over. Mm -hmm. So whether nice. that's travel, there is an army of us and we are ready and willing to help. <laughs> Tell me, where, where are you going on the bus? I'm going to get six signatures so that I can log in to Satin Low on Monday. Oh, will you be back by Sunday? I hope so. If you think that's hard, try leaving the department. Fifteen different signatures, all in sequential order. Now that's a lot of time wasted. Well, if you think about it quite conservatively, I mean, five hours per, per staff member per year you're looking at, uh, you know, uh, a lost efficiency of over $1 million. Tim, you are so difficult to get hold of. What does that say about you? I would like to think, Louise, it says that we're very busy. I think part of it is that um, we certainly recognise that DFAT have been very understanding and stoic. But I think it's more than that. I think you are really reshaping the way we do things. Both the Red Tape Review and the Innovation Exchange and the, and the Challenge have really showed that the department has a yearning to change the way we are. They have a yearning that we share more information. And clearly, I think a lot of the things we do will enable that if we, if we do it properly. So I think you're right. So back here has, um, <laughs> has been working very hard on coming up with a single briefing portal, which will essentially enable a user to go directly um, into a one-stop shop on the internet uh, and bring up the template uh, that they would want to use for a particular um, for a particular meeting. Um, but Buck, how's this been for you in terms of developing it? Well, it's a matter of consolidating the your idea of 12 templates into one. It's been a good exercise to see how um, how you can bring the sort of the, the policy need and then the, the technical expertise together. It's been great. Very nice. Will you would you would you do this again for us, Buck? 
Sure. <laughs> we're, all, we're always here to help the users. <laughs> Bob, you are really the absolute hardened DFAT warrior. And that's why I'm showing you this list of the top 40 suggestions we've received from staff about removing red tape in the department, because I wanted to know what you in particular thought of them. Well, Louisa, the first observation I would make is that these are precisely the sorts of things that the people are grumbling about these days. It's these things that are uh, of a ministry of nature that are relatively simple, but time consuming and frustrating. Okay, if we were able to make these systems better or change them entirely or chuck them out, do you think that would make a difference to the way people feel about working in the department? I think it would make a substantial difference to morale, but I think it would also make a substantial difference to productivity. So you think it's worth a shot? Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. The third one, the third theme was new ways. One of, the, uh, one of the refrains we also heard in our discussions was that the Working Smarter campaign of a decade ago, uh, or over a decade ago, had, had quite significant cut through in the way that people were able to conduct their lives in the department. And we wanted to build on that. Uh, there are so many new ways of providing briefing to each other and to senior colleagues and to hold meetings and to share information. Staff were very, very keen to get moving on, on those things and there's almost a sort of cottage industry out there of parts of the department and different divisions and posts where they're already adopting many, many, many more streamlined practices and I'd like to see those made absolutely mainstream. One of my big bugbears is the volume of material that you get to take to international meetings, the volume of briefing. And the day before leaving, I was presented with six volumes of briefing, uh, over 1,000 pages in total. It was so big, I had to take an extra suitcase just for the briefing. So my team came up with the brilliant idea of being able to load all publicly available documents onto an iPad. And I have to say that it impresses uh, all of the interlocutors at the table who still carry their enormous amounts of, uh, of briefs. And what maybe we need to do is actually think of our staff as our customers and how do we make their process or, or their, their experience in being at work at DFAT on a particular day as pleasant and as easy as possible. We found stand-up meetings an excellent tool for quick downloads of information. They run from seven to ten minutes, there's no room booking required, no long explanations, but just a short, sharp way to digest information, ask questions, and it's all on the go. And you can be back at your desk in under 15 minutes. Yes, Louise, my idea is instituting and normalising verbal briefs in the department for um, briefing our senior executive before they go off to senior officials talks or if they're going on a ministerial visit on what the key outcomes should be from that visit. So much of the time we sit at our desks as working level officers trying to put our, our mind to what that senior official most wants to achieve from the visit and how we can tailor the message to best capture their objectives. So the idea would be that our verbal briefs would become more commonplace in the department. So these are our themes and to my mind it goes to working even smarter. You'll find a, on the internet uh, this short film the at a glance outcomes and a manual, uh, <laughs> a manual which like all manuals hardly anyone will look at but we will because we want to follow through right to the very end to get these things through. Thank you. And I could barely carry it down the four flights that I needed to to get to the meeting room. And if you can't trust your divisional coordinator, <laughs> who can you trust? <laughs> yes, absolutely right. <laughs> <laughs> Louise, my big idea is about working even smarter through putting more emphasis on verbal briefing in the department. Um, it can be in... Oh, God, this is really hard. <laughs> Sorry. That's all right, keep going. Okay. Um...